We're here today with Sean Logan, Director of College Counseling at Phillips Academy. Sean, one big question that students often have is how selectivity should weigh on the college, uh, college search process. Can you talk, talk through how selectivity matters? Sure. So colleges tend to fall in three different categories, uh, non-selective schools. Uh, and with a non-selective school, that generally means that if students meet a minimum GPA um, and have a, typically a, uh, you know, a set of courses that that school is looking for and an SAT score, that they're going to be admitted. So if they meet the minimum, they're admitted. And that's the great majority of schools that are out there. Um, there are selective schools, um, and selective um, by definition means they have more applications than spots at their school, so they have to make some decisions. Um, selective is generally categorized as, say, admitting between 40% and 80% of their applicants. Uh, and then finally, the, the last category is highly selective. These schools tend to have many more applicants than they have spaces, so they have to make very difficult choices and they're, they're typically admitting less than 40% of their applicants all the way down to the most selective school in the country last year admitted 5% of its applicants. So um, those are the three different categories that are out there. Great. And can you talk us through, um, in each of these categories, maybe in a little bit more detail, who, who is it that makes it into a highly selective school versus a selective versus a non-selective? Sure. So. I think in terms of a non-selective school, it is, um, you know, if you sort of meet the minimum criteria that they put forward, and again, it's probably going to be a certain, certain number of classes in history and math and science um, and languages and so forth, um, you're going to be admitted. Um, so again, that's the great majority of schools that are out there. When you get into the selective and highly selective institutions, uh, I think both of those are going to start with um, your academics, right? So, and, and, and what I mean by that is, you know, have you challenged yourself in your, in your current high school? So have you taken uh, a very strong academic program uh, and gone above the minimum? Um, so again, if it only requires two years of science, have you taken four? Uh, if you haven't, um, what have you taken in place of that? Are they good, strong academic classes and so forth? So both selective and highly selective schools are going to look at the strength of your academics. Um, the better student you are, so if you're sort of an A, A minus student in a very good program in your high school, you're probably going to be a pretty good applicant for a highly selective school. Uh, if you're a B, B plus student, um, you know, or a solid B student in your high school in a good program, you're probably going to be competitive for a selective school. Now that's a very broad generalization, but just to give you some context, um, that's certainly part of it. Um, and then from there, these schools are also going to look at, you know, a number of other things um, that may include things like your teacher recommendations, your extracurricular activities. Um, they may also look at your, you know, essays if they require them. All of these things uh, will go into, you know, their decision-making process. Uh, but in general, if you're sitting out there trying to decide, you know, what kinds of schools should I be looking at, it certainly will be academically driven. Um, test scores, again, especially if you're a low-income student, tend to be looked at within the context, just like everything else will be. So if you're a, a student from a low-income family, um, you know, the school is going to look at you in, in, in context of the resources you have um, and, and really evaluate your testing based off of that. Um, if you're from a high-income family that's highly educated, you know, you're going to be evaluated based on that type of thing. So um, testing is something for any student they should study, they should work at to try to get the best scores they can, but they will be looked at in context. Great. And Sean, sort of implicit in this conversation is the idea that it's, it's sort of beneficial to go to more versus less selective schools. Can you talk us through what some of the benefits are of, if you are academically ready, going to a more selective school? You know, what, what I would say to you is there, there are a lot of benefits um, to sort of pushing yourself. You already have done that in your high school context. If you are, you know, going to be competitive for a selective or highly selective school, you've already taken good courses. You've pushed yourself. You've done those things to put yourself in a position to apply to these kinds of schools. And these schools have benefits that, that may really benefit you in, in what you want your college experience. Those things tend to be things like really good financial aid packages. Um, I've had many students who have actually gone to very expensive schools and paid much less than they would have at their local um, uh, public school. Um, the opportunities there in terms of if a school has you know a two billion dollar endowment versus a hundred million dollar endowment, um, the resources are very very different and what you can expect at that school in terms of laboratory spaces in terms of you know dormitories in terms of the student body that's there um, the population um, of you know who you will be going to school with at these schools tends to be much more diverse on a lot of levels socioeconomically racially geographically um, in a lot of different ways that will benefit you in your educational process so um, you know again 
thinking about pushing yourself and applying to these selective and highly selective schools um, can really open doors for you that you, you may not know exist right now. They tend to have um, opportunities in terms of their career resources um, that, you know, so career services, I mean. So as you're leaving school, um, in fact, a lot of these schools now are, are starting in freshman year with you and sort of getting prepared, preparing, helping you prepare your resume, getting you to do interviews, and really thinking about as you go through your four years, also thinking about your career after that. Um, and again, they have the resources to do that. The University of Chicago has, has upwards of 40 people in their career resource center to help uh, students um, you know, with their career after. And that's just an astonishing number. Great. Sean, thank you so much.